Hey guys, in a video I released a few months ago, I showed how to use Cloudflare tunnels to access your uh, self-hosted applications, even if you can't port forward, or even if you've got a dynamic IP address. And from my experience, using something like Cloudflare tunnels is a bit more secure uh, than using something like Traffic or Nginx Proxy Manager or Caddy. Again, because you have to open up ports on your network uh, that of course then wants to invite uh, the bad guys into your network if they happen to figure out that you've got those ports open. So in this video, we're actually going to expand on our Cloudflare tunnels video just a little bit. And I wanna show you a couple of different things that you can do to uh, help restrict access to your self-hosted applications via a couple of different methods. But first, a quick message from today's video sponsor. This video is sponsored by Tuxedo Computers and the Tuxedo Aura 15 Gen 2. The Aura 15 Gen 2 comes with an AMD Ryzen 7 5700U. That gives you eight cores and 16 threads while only sipping 15 watts of power. This means that the 49 watt hour battery will get you hours of productivity while on the go. You'll also get the AMD Radeon RX Vega 8 featuring eight GPU cores that clock up to 1900 megahertz. The Aura 15 Gen 2 supports up to 64 gigs of dual channel DDR4 RAM. That way you can have as many Chrome tabs open as you need for your productivity. With a thickness of less than two centimeters and only weighing in at 1.65 kilograms, taking the Aura 15 Gen 2 will be a breeze. You'll get a 15.6 inch 1080p screen that covers 95% of the sRGB color space with a peak brightness of 300 nits. The Aura 15 Gen 2 comes loaded with I.O. ports, including USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C Full Feature Display Port 1.4, a USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A, two USB 2.0 Type-A ports, and an HDMI 1.4 port that includes HDCP, 4K UHD at 30 Hertz native. We'll also get a gigabit LAN port and a two-in-one headphone microphone jack, as well as a micro SD card slot. For more information or to configure your own Aura 15 Gen 2, check out the link in the description. So as I mentioned, we're gonna take a look at a couple of different ways that we can add some additional levels of security to prevent uh, people that you don't want being on your self-hosted applications, well, from being on your self-hosted applications. Uh, we're gonna take a look at two different methods of restriction. Uh, the first one is based on IP address. That's the one that I use almost exclusively. Uh, the other one is using uh, email addresses. Now there's a couple of different ways that we can implement the email address method. Uh, but again, there's a caveat to that um, that, uh, that we'll talk about when we get to that point. So like I mentioned, I use the IP address method. And the reason for that is my ISP, uh, it, is, it, is, it is like pulling teeth to get a new IP address from them. Uh, I had the same IP address on my network uh, from my ISP for like six years or something. Um, and, and one time I was like, hey, I'd like to get a new IP address. Something happened, I need a new IP address. And they're like, oh, the only way you can do that is to go down to the store and get a new modem. Then we can assign a new IP address to that modem. I know not everybody, not all of the ISPs out there are like that. Um, so that's just kind of something to keep in mind. That's why I'm using my IP address in this is because the likelihood of my IP address changing is very, very slim. However, uh, that doesn't help if I'm out and about, I'm on my phone, I need to access something at home like my password manager or something like that. So what I've done, and I wanna be clear that this video is not sponsored by private internet access, However, uh, my email is, is available if they want to, uh, to sponsor some content. Um, but basically I've got uh, an account with them and I spent a few extra bucks a year to get a dedicated IP address through private internet access so that I can just connect to that. And I've got that IP address set up in my security rules so that even if I'm away from home or whatever, I don't have to worry about trying to, you know, like remote into a VPN container that's on my network that requires a port open that defeats the whole purpose of using Cloudflare tunnels. So let's take a look at getting uh, IP address restrictions set up first. Quick interruption to say that if at any point in this video you find this video helpful, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. It really would help me out a lot. And if you're interested in this kind of content, there is a subscribe button down there that you could click as well. Also, just for clarification, this is not an intro video. This is kind of a more advanced video uh, in the sense that you need to have watched that first video and kind of understand how Cloudflare Tunnels works, have it implemented before this video will work or make any sense. So I just wanted to get that out there. Uh, this is kind of a follow-up video. This is not the video you should start with. I will try to remember to link to the other video in the description down below. 
Okay, so here we are on my applications page. I'm gonna have a lot of this blurred because you don't need to see it. But uh, what I am gonna do is add a new application to this page so that we can add some restrictions to uh, how people can access it. So what I wanna do is come up here to where it says add an application. We're gonna click on self-hosted. We're gonna give it a name. I'm gonna call it DB Tech, like so. Uh, you've got a session duration option here that you can select, uh, whether it's it want it to expire immediately, which I can't imagine you want it to do that, but you can have it expire after 15 minutes, 30 minutes, six hours, 12 hours, whatever, up to a month. So you can, you can kind of be granular about how long you want this access to be available. <clears throat> Uh, below that, we can enter a subdomain. If you're using a subdomain, I, I do for a lot of my stuff, but uh, because we're just doing this dbtech.com URL, we're gonna skip the subdomain and just select dbtech.com. If you got a path, you know, a dbtech.com slash something, uh, you could put that in here as well if you wanted to. Again, we're just doing a, a basic domain setup here. Um, and below that, uh, all of this other stuff down here is fine. Uh, you can leave it, you can change it, whatever. Uh, but for the sake of a simple setup, uh, this will be just fine. We're gonna click next. We're gonna give it a policy name. I'm gonna call it uh, IP, just for IP address, so I know what this policy is for. Uh, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna do a bypass here. Um, and then again, we can modify the session duration for this particular um, policy, but I don't see the, ne the need to do that. You can adjust that if you want to, but I'm just gonna leave it as is. Uh, here you can see I've got a couple of groups, uh, basically a couple of policies that I've built outside of this page for easier deployment for things later. Uh, also, if you start to get a lot of these, uh, and we're gonna cover this, but basically just, if you get a lot of these uh, applications that you're adding that you wanna restrict access to, uh, and you wanna restrict it, say by IP address, uh, and you've got 30 applications and you don't wanna granularly have to go back in and manually change each one, uh, one at a time, you can set up groups and then assign groups. It's just easier that way. But we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. So what I wanna do, uh, because I've got that set as default, I'm just gonna disable it for right now. Um, then I'm gonna scroll down. Uh, my, my selector here, again, we've got IP address, we've got IP ranges, uh, we've got uh, basically for this setup, IP ranges is what we're gonna look at uh, for the moment. And then what we're gonna do is put in an IPv4 slash v6 uh, IP address here. You can actually put in multiples and I'll show you that, but uh, we're just gonna put in one for the sake of, of testing here. What I need to do is get my IP address. So I'm gonna go with uh, just my IP like so. Uh, I'm gonna grab this. This is not my home IP address. I'm connected to a VPN. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there. I'm gonna hit enter. Uh, if you don't hit enter, it's not gonna it's not gonna pop into that little bubble there. Um, so make sure that once you get that IP address put in there, you hit enter so that it looks like this. Again, if you wanted to, you could add additional IP addresses to this uh, this little box here if you wanted to do that. But uh, we're not gonna for just for what we're doing here. Uh, and then once we've got all of this set up the way we want, we're gonna click next. Uh, you can adjust the 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 cores, basically the 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 remote or the cross server stuff. You can uh, you can adjust that the cross allow credentials, things like that. The cookie settings you can you can adjust additional settings. Again, you can you can adjust all of this. But again, for the sake of, of keeping things as simple as we can here, we're just going to uh, just click on add an application. So now, if I close this window and I do a Control F five everything works like we would expect it to work. So now what I wanna do is change my IP address and show you what happens next. So we're gonna go back over here, we're gonna do uh, my IP again, just so we can see, we've got this 181 address here. And if we come back into this area uh, and we look, we've got a 154 down here. So if I come back over here and click at Control F5, hey, you're not allowed to do that. So uh, now if we wanted to, we could just take this IP address right here and paste that in like so, uh, and then click save. And now we're back up and running. It did take it a second to take effect. Uh, sometimes it's DNS, sometimes settings just take a minute to do their thing. But that's how you can restrict access to your applications using an IP address. In fact, I added a couple of IP addresses there, uh, you know, like we saw in this little area here. Uh, this is more or less, like if we scroll down, there it is. This is more or less what my settings look like, obviously with different IP addresses. Again, I, you've got my home IP address and then the dedicated IP that I bought from uh, from private internet access. Again, links to, to, uh, to PIA will be in the description. If you, if you sign up for them, I don't get any money, but I get a free month. So that's, that's all that's going on there. Um, so that's basically all there is to, to restricting by IP address. So the next thing we wanna take a look at is restricting by email address.
Okay, so here we are, we're back on our dashboard where we were a minute ago with the split screen thing going on and our website up and running. Let's just do a control F5 just to make sure everything is working. Uh, what I wanna do though is actually delete this rule uh, because we're gonna create a new rule for this. We're gonna click delete right here. Um, and once that is done, there we go. If I do a control F5 again over here, everything continues to work um, because we have we have removed uh, the, the IP address requirement. So the next thing we wanna do is actually we're gonna do kind of the same thing we did a moment ago. We're gonna click on add an application. We're gonna do self-hosted. Uh, we're gonna give it an application name of DB Tech. Again, again, we've got the option for session duration of whatever we wanna set it to there. We can set up a subdomain. Again, we're gonna just use our dbtech.com URL there with no subdomain or path. Uh, we're gonna leave everything down here the same as we did just a moment ago earlier in the video. And then we're gonna go up here to next. Uh, for, e for policy, I'm gonna do uh, email. Again, just so I know what it is. Um, allow is, is fine. Uh, we're gonna uncheck this. I think we won't allow there anyway. If I'm wrong, I'll fix it. But uh, basically what we're gonna do is scroll down. Uh, we're gonna click select. We're gonna say, again, we've got email. Oops. Uh, we've got emails where you, where you just put in a full email address. So if I do that, you know, it'd be like David at idbreviews.com and hit enter. And then we've got that as an option in there. So if I scroll up and click next, and then again, we've got the option to change any of this cores stuff if we wanted to. Uh, I don't, we're not going to though, again, for just keeping this simple. And we're gonna click on add an application. And then I'm gonna do a control F5 over here. And there we go. So now it's like, hey, um, you need to enter your email address here, right? So if I enter my email address and click on send me a code, now it's like, hey, we've emailed a code to you. So what we're gonna do is come back over to here um, and we're going to just give it a second. And here after just a moment, uh, it didn't take too long. Sometimes though, and we're gonna talk about this, sometimes this takes a minute and that's not terribly helpful if I'm being completely honest. Um, like I've had it take, like this This took less than 30 seconds, but I have had it in the past for some reason, maybe it was just a user error. I've had it take a few minutes. And if you're trying to access something on your network, waiting a few minutes uh, isn't practical. It's not, uh, it's it's not, it doesn't, doesn't make you feel warm and fuzzy about self-hosting if you're relying on somebody else's servers to send you the credentials to get into your site. And that's why I'm not a big fan of doing the email authentication, but I wanted to show it anyway. So if we take a look over here, we've got a couple of options. We can click uh, this link or we can enter this code like this and click sign in. I'll give this a second. And now we've got access to our website again by putting in the code that was emailed to us because we asked uh, Cloudflare Tunnels to use email authentication to gain access. And of course, with that, if we come back over to our, uh, our applications here and we take a look at this and we click on edit, um, down here where it says emails, if we, like, let's, let's just go ahead and delete that. And if we did this, we did set emails ending in, well, then you could do like your entire domain name, right? If everybody, if you had all your friends and family or whatever that you wanted to have access to this, you could just put in, you know, at mydomain.com uh, right there. So I do at uh, dbtechreviews.com and hit enter. And then I could click save. And then anybody who entered a DB Tech Reviews email address would get an email, uh, would get a code emailed to them so that then they could access uh, the setup here. Now, don't do that with a Gmail address or a Yahoo address or a Hotmail address or whatever. Only use the at mydomain.com if you're using an at mydomain.com email address. Uh, like I said, don't use Yahoo, don't use Google, don't use any of those free providers out there uh, for this just because. Now, the other thing to keep in mind here is that if I come into here um, and let's change this, let's actually delete this. There's one more thing I wanted to cover here real quick. Emails, and if I do uh, David, adbtechreviews.com like so, and I come up here and I click save policy. Right, so now I have that email address set up in there again, if we take a look. Uh, right there is our, our email address we wanna use here. And if I do a control F5, we'll do this a couple of times until it kind of kicks in. Sometimes because of caching, it's just easier to open a new window, a new new new, new browser uh, over here. So I went from, from Firefox to Edge. And remember over here, I've got David at DB Tech Reviews. There it is, David at dbtechreviews.com in there as the uh, authorized email address, right? So if I do, an old email address that I've got and click on send me a code, uh, it's going to say this, right? It's gonna, it's gonna give them the exact same experience. However, uh, because I didn't authorize this email address to be used, um, 
that person's never going to get that email. Uh, it's just how it works. You're not going to get an email. Even though it says we sent you an email, you're not going to get an email. And it's not going to give you any indication that that's a wrong email. Like if I come over to my email address over here, uh, I've got I've got nothing in here from um, from Cloudflare. So I'm never going to get that email because I didn't authorize that email to be available. Now, earlier I mentioned that um, setting it up this way is fine if you've only got a couple of different uh, applications or domain names or whatever that you're trying to remotely access. That needs to be there. However, uh, let's say you've got, you know, like 20, like I've got nearly 20 applications set up for remote access. And if something changes, like recently they did some work on uh, on my ISP, my ISP came in and did some work in the neighborhood and it changed my IP address and I lost access to everything. However, uh, I was able to go in and quickly fix it by changing one thing. And I'm gonna show you how to get that set up. So what I'm gonna do is actually come over here to this dbtech.com. I'm just gonna delete that record and click delete right there. And what we're gonna do is come over here to access groups. And here you can see, I've got a couple of different access groups available. One of them email, one of them is IP address. So what we can do is uh, let's get an IP address from uh, private internet access real quick. Okay, so here is my public IP address. This is through the VPN again, of course. Uh, what we can do is click on add a group. Uh, we're gonna call this demo uh, just because I don't wanna mess with it later. We're gonna call this demo. Here you've got the option to set this as a default group if you want. Like earlier when we were uh, kind of going through a couple of those different setup methods, you saw that IP addresses, that group name was already pre-checked. And that's because I had this set as the default group. I'm not gonna do that here because I don't wanna override any of my other settings, but you can absolutely do that if you want to. What I wanna do next though is come down here and click on uh, IP ranges, for instance. And I want to uh, copy this IP address and put that in there and click enter and then click save. Right, so now I've got um, my demo right here that I can take a look at. And right there is the IP address range that I just put in there. It, it added the slash 32 uh, just to make it a, a single IP address, but now that we've got this IP address uh, group set up in here, uh, we can come back to applications. We can go to uh, add an application. We can go to self-hosted. Uh, and again, we're gonna call this uh, DB, oops, DB tech. Uh, 24 hours is fine. We're gonna select my domain name. We're gonna click next. Uh, the policy name is going to be, uh, we're, uh, we're just gonna call it IP uh, just because uh, we're gonna bypass here. And then we're gonna come down here to where it says demo. We're just gonna check that and we're gonna click next. And then we'll click add an application. I'll give this a second. Everything appears to still be working here. So now I'm gonna change my IP address and try again. Okay, so I've changed my IP address. Let's verify that. Now we've got a 154.3.44.210. We're gonna come back over here and do a control F5. And we are not allowed to do that. So what we can do then, is let's say we wanted to add this IP address to that group. We can come back to our groups. We can go to demo. Uh, we can grab this IP address right there, put that in, click go, click save. Give this a second, control F5. We'll give this a second here. And now we're back up and running. So you can you can kind of follow that same methodology with email addresses like we did before. Uh, of course, like we did with IP addresses. And this is just a couple of the different options that we have available to restrict access to our network, uh, you know, to, to, keep, to keep other people that we don't want on our network off of our network. That's what we're here to do. So this is the method that I use in order to help secure my network, to keep people that I don't know or don't want on my network off of my network. And I hope this video is helpful. I hope it kind of makes sense uh, is kind of how some of this stuff works uh, and why I prefer to use IP addresses versus email addresses to authenticate just because sometimes that email, that, that sending that email can take a little longer than, than my impatient ass can deal with. So I like to use the IP address method, but I'd be curious to know what kind of methodology you guys would use. Let me know in the comment section down below uh, what, kind of, what kind of restrictions you would like to use on your network for a little extra security. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, do me a favor, it would really mean a lot to me. If you gave the video a thumbs up and maybe if you're interested in this kind of content, if you hit the subscribe button, that would be amazing as well. Uh, also, just something to bring up, uh, I've been bringing it up in my videos lately. Uh, if you're interested in my content, but you, you, you're not interested in the ads, the bacon ads, the YouTube ads, that sort of thing, uh, for as little as a dollar a month, just, just one dollar a month, you can get access to my content with no ads over on Patreon or over on dbtech.fans. Uh, either of those places will give you just one dollar 
more access to my content uh, with no ads, uh, any of the content I've released in the past few months anyway. Um, and, and I wanna thank the, the several of you who have signed up recently. Uh, it, it really does mean a lot to me that you're willing to support me uh, off the platform uh, in order to, to help me keep creating content like this. So thank you guys, uh, all of the newcomers, all the people who've been around for a while. Thank you all so much for supporting me and what I'm doing here, trying to share a bit of information uh, with an audience. So uh, I think with that said, I'm gonna wrap this up. I do wanna thank you for spending a few minutes of your day with me today. And with that said, I'll wrap this up and talk to you guys in the next video.